Hello and welcome back and we're continuing looking at SSDs for PS5 and it's time to go back to the Samsung 980 Pro. We're going to test some more games. There's the benchmark on the screen, 6300 or so sequential read and we're going to run our first game. Of course it is Demon Souls, a remake of the old PS3 title. We've got a couple of tests to do and for those that have watched my other videos recently you'll know what they are but we've got to cover all the SSDs, we've got to do all the performance tests and we've got to know how each one performs in of itself before we go into the big 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 comparison so first test we're going to be running there is loading the game direct from the title screen we've got a save spot in place we're not going to be playing online so there won't be any internet delays there and we're going straight into the game from there we're going to test out some of the arch stones to different areas of the game so let's load that save spot between the two of them and do you know what? Near enough identical there in terms of transition. The camera turn does make it a bit difficult there, I think. I maybe should have taken care of that in the record. But to be honest, I think that's a fairly solid start there. What we're looking for is for the SSD to be the same or faster than the internal SSD storage on the PS5. Next, we're going to load up an arch stone from the central nexus area there. We can see that is exactly the same time there. So let's have a look which one's going to be quicker. And... Yeah, I would say the Samsung was a little faster, but I would say even then, not by much. Um, I think the two of them were largely level, you know, pegged there all the way through. I'm going to be interested to see how all of these SSDs compare in the big head-to-head -head later. But for now, that first arch stone there, pretty straightforward. So we'll go into our second loading there of a different arch stone within Demon Souls from the Nexus. And then boom, we're in once again exactly the same pace same fog there let's make our way into the game now and do you know what again the samsung 980 pro there got a slight advantage there which is lovely to see there so again we're running through the game just running to the end there before we move on to our next title again if you've watched the videos you know what it is but for those that haven't watched my other performance tests and you were looking for this specific ssd it is ratchet and clank ratchet and clank there uh we are running two different segments of this game we're running right at the beginning after the initial cutscene, and a part in the game about 20 30 minutes in when there's a big transitional element as we go through different areas uh during the kind of warp stage of this so again this is a game that was requested quite heavily before and we will be revisiting it in a later video um, hopefully when the, the beta is no longer a beta but for now let's go into the ssd versus um, the internal ssd and into loading from a save spot there at the start of the game again the internal ssd did that a lot quicker i think there is a slight frame difference uh, there at the start of the transition between them because i know there are uh, two very quick scenes to skip through uh, two options there at the beginning so that might be causing the tiniest delay uh, but between the two of them still looking pretty good i know the screen on the left from the ps5 is a bit foggy i've mentioned it in other videos and i will say it again this has been recorded on two separate playstations uh, and the uh, one doing the internal ssd there the contrast settings there were for a different tv and it got caught up in the capture um, so we're going to use it but it's just a little heads up there about how the one on the left just seems a little grayer and it's making it look a fraction grainier overall in the recordings there on capture but still between the two of them i think the performance is absolutely fine there let's make our way into our next test there between the two of them still in ratchet and clank and yes it's the warp area from a load from the title screen and we're having a look and i think that's largely identical i again i am making a point of moving cameras and characters and shooting i want to make it abundantly clear that there is control in this area even though we're walking through these different regions the idea that this playstation ssd and the samsung 980 pro are still performing remarkably well exactly why i want to see them together running at the same pace at least it's not always about the ssd being fast in my opinion i just want to know that the uh, external ssd i put in the expansion I should say the expansion ssd i just want to make sure that runs at the same pace but even if we look about the feet touching the ground there in the area still absolutely identical during this um so again we're about to go into a cut scene there <clears throat> so we can come out of this game i think in just a second because from this point there's no more control i would argue that i think the samsung is a fraction ahead looking at the way things are being introduced into the game on this cutscene. It would suggest that 
things were done better. There we are. This is our next game, Resident Evil 7 Village, uh, or Resident Evil 8, if you are a purist. And again, from this game, we've got two areas that we're going to be utilising. We're going to be escaping uh, the castle safe game that we're going to be utilising. Again, very brief segment for about 30, 40 seconds. And then from there, we're going to go to the stronghold later in the game, where we're going to transition through several game areas in one solid run, just to show that the game doesn't have any load difficulties in between as we go into these different assets. So the first one, save game, loaded from the title there into it, less than three seconds, boom, we're in. I think, again, almost little to no difference between them there. Yes, there's difference a bit about what the things happening on screen are, but again, that's more how the game is controlled. And I'll be honest, this is the um, stock footage that bums me out the most about that horrible uh, contrast sitting there on the other PlayStation. But alas, moving into low test number two on the Samsung 980 Pro, the one we've done before. Let's have a look loading from the stronghold. And again, we're in the stronghold, near enough identical loading there. But the real test is going to be running through this game all the way through two or three areas in a non-stop trot and seeing if the game is going to encounter any kind of loading difficulties there. Sometimes on a game like this when you're running from region to region very, very quickly, that can result in uh, the game needing to have not being able to utilize its hidden loading mechanics and is forced to um, pause to do the loading. I'm pleased to say that neither the internal SSD, obviously, or the Samsung 980 Pro suffered with any kind of overt uh, forced loading during these segments as I ran through different areas of the game. And again, that darkness there because of the contrast, super annoying, but we're going to have to let that fly for now. Um, but for me, the Samsung 980 is still running pretty darn well overall. Again, it should do with that 7,000 sequential read. I should bloody well hope so. But as we make our way towards the end here, we're going to stop by the merchant near the altar. And then from there, we're going to make our way into our second to last game. Uh, but for now, we're just making our way running through the village there. The self-titled village of the game there going through. And then from that, we're going to go into a PS4 game with a PS5 upgrade, namely Doom Eternal. Now in Doom Eternal, we are running, as I say, the PS4 version with PS5 upgrade and all the settings in the video section with HDR, etc. All lovely and enabled. So from there, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the Samsung 980 Pro deals with that. And again, going through it right now there on screen, I would argue that the title screen is one of my favorite title screens. It's so understated, but just foreboding. Um, we're going to go into the first save there, and that is going to be jumping into um, the beginning of the game. So again, quite similar there. I know it's a rapidly spamming X section there. I think most of these games have loaded this game pretty darn well. Um, I think that was a slight um, mistap of the button there, I think, on the Samsung. So I'm prepared to let the Samsung fly on this one and say that they're running the same, I would say. Um, but again, the head-to-head -head is going to be the biggest example of that as we go through. But again, as we go through this, one of the things I keep coming back to is these external SSDs. They don't necessarily have to exceed the internal storage. We don't need that. We need it to match it because these games are going to be designed with the internal SSD in mind. And it will be great if you can exceed it as technology moves forward, but not essential. So next save, we're going to get into our final game, which is GTA. Now, Grand Theft Auto V is a PS4 title, but it's going to come to PS5 soon. And I do know that it still has an enormous following of games, players and streamers and more online and YouTube, of course. So I wanted to see how the horrendously slow load time of GTA V is handled by the, uh, the Samsung 980 Pro SSD and the internal SSD. So we're going to load them up. And again, these are from the main PlayStation XMB menu and directly into that horrendously slow load screen from GTA 5. Anyone that's ever played GTA 5, and let's be honest, you have. Everybody has. It's GTA 5. You'll know that that opening loading time is horrendous. Yes, there was that smart cookie that managed to slice off a bunch of loading and submit it to Rockstar and they paid him. But I don't know how much of that has made it onto consoles. I know the PC community did quite well out of it, but I don't know if it was implemented on consoles or not. But as we go through and watch these transitions, 
I would say right now that internal SSD is a pinch ahead. Have you noticed that? As we go through these different transitional effects here, and this is the offline, this is single player, but I would say that internal SSD is gaining ground very gradually. At the beginning, they were identical, but as more time wears on, I would say that Samsung 980 Pro was a pinch behind the internal SSD. Ignore the save spot load there, makes no difference. We're only looking at the game's main loading transition there. But for me, that's pretty, um, you know, that's pretty clear that the internal SSD did that slightly better. This is a PS4 title, so again, it's not strictly the same as PS5, but I do think it's worthy of no. But I'm going to wrap things up on the testing here and get things started on the main comparisons there later on. So do stay tuned for those. But thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. There's links in the description to everything I talk about in these videos, from heatsinks to SSDs to other videos to check out as well, as well as NC the blog. And apart from that, enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time.